Warning! This podcast contains amazing content and strong language. Maybe a bit late in the day, guys, but it's, it's still amazing. It's yeah. never too late. It's <laughs> never too late, literally. I think, like, Sia got famous at 40 or something. Like, there's so many people out there. I'm sure, like, she's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But and there's a lot of people after they're dead as well. Yeah, well, we don't want that <laughs> to happen, yeah, so yeah, take that one well, out of the universe. Is that? Is that? Is that? John, just die, mate. Just die, and then everybody will watch you. No, don't die. Uni- <laughs> the universe, we take that back. We take that one back. <laughs> well, I've, got, mate, I've got that written on me, man. I'll definitely be in the front page of the paper. No, 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 no. no. Never. Easy, easy. We'll make sure you get back famous. to the back catalogues. Tell me to die. <laughs> back to back catalogues. Tell me to die. <laughs> 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 I'm Juliana Hopkins and I'm Natasha Jenkins and you're listening to Back to Back Catalogues. Today on Back to Back Catalogues we have John Rush. Hello, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is John Rush as we've already stated and I'm originally from Paisley, uh, sitting on a songwriter based in Glasgow. I like saying that just in case anybody from Paisley hears me because I may feel the wrath if I say I'm from Glasgow so I'm, I'm originally from Paisley. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice. Very cool. So what got you into music? Um, I think my mum and dad got me into music. My dad made me watch Elvis documentaries. My mum made me watch Mark Boland documentaries. And yeah, man, I, I don't know if... Yeah, I think that was it. Like, I just was besotted with them and watched all these tapes constantly, just back to back for forever until I was, like, maybe until I could go out and play, maybe. <laughs> and then, then I maybe stopped that a little bit, but I still still was into music massively um, and started still am, obviously. But I, yeah, my mum and dad definitely massive emphasis on that. And, um, Elvis is a massive um, mm. big, big, big guy to me. Yeah. Big guy. Do love mm-hmm. Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. definitely. Man of my dreams. Love you, babe. <laughs> now playing Gold and Green by John Rush. Little angel came down today Said everything was gonna be okay And all her dreams were bathed in her little pools of gold and green You know I never even caught her name Smiles glistened as we listened to the summer breeze Slowly slipping off our crown Telling fables of all the people that she wished to meet I knew she'd get me there somehow Till I'd say Kiss me Kiss me while there's no one else around Hold me Hold me but I'll only let you down Um so did you get like lessons with guitar or singing or did you just like pick it up yourself or? Um, I, I just picked up singing myself. I, I didn't really play guitar. I remember getting a guitar when I was like seven or something and I, I just stayed in my cupboard. I didn't touch it. I, I kind of like looked in the mirror a little bit with it and played about with it like that but <laughs> never actually learned it. Nice. Um, just trying to copy, trying to copy, um, 
yeah, just try to copy Elvis, I suppose, and just like learning his kind of techniques. I, I don't really, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't teach anybody it, but I, I, I can understand it in my head and just le- learn it that way. Not that I can sing in any level near Elvis, but it, it's definitely, if you listen to the techniques I use, it's definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely borrowed from him a lot. <laughs> um, and then when it came to, to playing guitar, I think Oasis, when I was like 12, 13, that's when I kind of was like, right, I actually need to learn how to play guitar as well, because mm-hmm. then I wanted to be no Galka um, <laughs> for a bit. So, yeah, it's good. I think my, my music thing is just the, me wanting to be someone else, which is really strange. Now I've, I've just thought of that. This is a therapy session, it's became. That's <laughs> all right. No, that's... I could break down at any, any moment now, guys. There's a, there's a curtain that's been moved, and I, I was unaware of that. Um, no, but I, yeah, El, Elvis, no Gallica, Liam Gallica, and. Um, just anybody who sang and looked cool, mm-hmm. I was like, I want to do that. So mm. I, that was yeah. kind of, that was that. That's why a lot of us do it. Yeah, it? I was going to say, at that age, like 14, you do kind of mm-hmm. just like look at the big bands and you're like, oh my God, I want to be you. Yeah, I want your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. you try and copy that. But I mean, like looking at the Gallagher brothers and then listening to your music, I don't see many correlations <laughs> between the two. <laughs> no, definitely not. It's which is strange. I think, um, I think, when I was like starting to write songs and stuff, you would definitely hear like I was just basically copying Wonderwall and Don't Let Back Nanga for a good five, six years. But mm-hmm. I think as you get older, you kind of, especially with something like Oasis, the soul signature. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's hard to get away with copying that yeah. without sounding like Oasis. So I think um, I kind of started to steer clear of that and. Yeah, the Beatles was a massive like when I started listening to the Beatles, and that was around about twelve, thirteen as well. Like mm-hmm. they were, and still are the influence when it comes to songwriting. I think. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I've stole a lot of Beatles songs, but they've got a lot to steal. So exactly, it's harder to it's, it's harder to kind of follow where I've stole stuff, especially if I steal about five Beatles songs within one of mine. It's, <laughs> it's quite hard to to understand where it's came from, but. Yeah, man. The beat, the beat blues are, have always been so yeah. Since around about Oasis, obviously Oasis mentioning them, and then you go looking yeah. in that ca- catalog after that. Then yeah, they, I feel the like Beatles were what it. Yeah, I feel like the music industry, like I feel like with songwriters, everything is kind of big, borrowed and stolen. And like, you, if you were to look back at all the biggest hits through fifty years or whatever, you're going to see similarities and things that's been copied. Chord progressions, maybe like a line from a song. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just what it's just exactly. what gets done. It's, it's borrowing and like taking inspiration. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As I, as I keep thinking of my my sister because she's got to the age where she finds every song in the radio sounds like someone else's song because mm-hmm. she's went through a couple of decades more than I have. Yeah. And, uh, I, I keep saying to her like, "There's only twelve knots, man. Like if you <laughs> want to listen to something that's completely brand new, you need to listen to the Radiohead, or yeah, Pink Floyd mm-hmm. or something. Someone who's just like not following the rules, but yeah. other than that." You're going to hear a lot of songs, exactly. just the one song. Yes, exactly. um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not scared of stealing. No, no, well, no I'm you shouldn't. Oh. And I'm scared. <laughs> 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 Back in 2014, we did a little bit of research on you. We do this with everybody that um, comes on the show. Okay. So it's I saw that you auditioned for The Voice. Can you tell us a little bit about that yeah. experience? I bet you're like, um, I hope this didn't come up, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We know um, a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I put it down to experience. I think after I'd done it, I was really, yeah, I, I kind of went off music and everything, like after I'd done mm-hmm. it, and not, not in a, I suppose that can be like, well, I never got through it, so then fuck music do you know what I mean but it wasn't mm-hmm. that it was like more I, I wanted to I wanted something that much that I I ended up singing Lady Gaga in front of Tom Jones do you know what I mean that's how much I wanted something and it, I, it really wasn't after I took six months off of like even touching a guitar I realised that isn't actually what I was wanting mm-hmm. I think I was clutching at straws I was turning 30 so I think everything I was just like this is my last chance. I need to just do something like a bit extreme to like really try and get this. Push the ball. And then once, once I, once I never, it never happened for me, and I realised what I actually just done <laughs> in front of, uh, in front of millions of people. Um, yeah, I took a, I took a step back and then just realised what I actually wanted to do. And I think um, 
songwriting was a massive thing of that. I really took that seriously after that show. And, and I think, yeah, just, I took songwriting seriously, but I took myself less seriously, which really mm-hmm. helped as well. Yeah. I think um, before that, I was like, kind of trying to be a mean and moody, like sing a songwriter guy. And then once I'd done that, I was like, well, do you know what I mean? What's like, the point? I've done that. Yeah. So, what, like, what else could happen that's going to be ridiculous? So, I just, mm-hmm. I just enjoy it now, in which I, I probably never before I'd done that. Yeah. Um, I was just like, yeah, I was just wanting something. I was wanting an end product in reality that I didn't really want. So I had to do that to learn that, I suppose. Sounds like yeah. it was a bit which of an is... eye-opener for you, which is yeah. good. You never usually see that. Oh, yeah, that. definitely, man. Um, and not to knock a show, people who do it, like, fair play to them and people who get stuff out of it, that's exactly why you're doing it. Um, mm. But um, I ju- it just felt a bit contrived. It, fe- it felt really controlled under what, what they kind of advertises not a real really controlled environment it, mm-hmm. it was it was massively that so that's why i ended up mm-hmm. saying lady gaga i was gonna yeah. say lady gaga knew Kylie, man. not two i would put together but they tell you what to do well, and they try and sell <coughs> you right that's yeah well the, well, the thing happens. was when i was doing the when i was doing the, the first kind of audition parts you pick what you want to sing so i was singing stuff like like Beatles beast days like, like you really got a hold of me like Smokey Robinson I was singing my, my version of the Beatles song something which is a bit slower and a bit more bluesy as well and they, were, they seemed to be really into that mm-hmm. and then yeah and then I was like yeah as I keep saying I was singing Lady Gaga at the end of it so it was just completely yeah. not what I went in like yeah and then I came out what they wanted to see so yeah I, it, it was not it was an amazing experience, but it was definitely worthwhile because I, I feel much, um, much more myself mm-hmm. now than I did before I've done it. I think. So, how would you describe the music that you typically create now? Um, I think, I think my bio says it's folk tinged pop pop songs. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which is which is probably correct. Like I, I'm. Yeah, I, I, I'm a guy with a beard who likes sitting like six star <laughs> singing songs. So, I mean, like, it's quite hard to not do the stuff that I do. Um, but with all the kind of other influences, and yeah, I think I think I do my own version of it. I don't think I, I really. I could, yeah, I, d- I don't know who I sound like just now. I think I, I, this mm-hmm. is probably the most genuine version of me that mm-hmm. I sound like. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can go, well, it sounds like this, it sounds like that guy, because there's lots there, like Ray the Montaigne, there's Father John Misty, there's I love Father John still Bitsy Oasis, there's a lot of Beatles in there, there's T-Rex, there's, yeah, mm-hmm. there's Hunters, so I, I, I don't know. But that's good, that's good. Like. I think it is good, and yeah, you're right, you can't pinpoint what you sound like, who you sound like more, mm-hmm. and that's like, again, showing how unique you've come, like from what you were exactly. saying before, like, you were trying to be someone else and then now you're at a point where you can't pinpoint who you're like because you are solely being so unique which is so mm-hmm. important I think for singer songwriters and I think like when you write your own music and you sing it you're you're being so honest with what comes out in your music it's so personal to yourself that yeah. there it is hard to pinpoint because if you're writing about your own experiences you can't really say that you're you can see other people in it because it's your own experiences yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah I think it's, I mean that's true yeah and you take your experiences your influences and then you create your unique sound and style yeah yeah that's good I mean I, I, I've not invented reinvented the wheel in it and like it's definitely acoustic <laughs> pop stuff but yeah I think um, just as I was saying before they kind of not take myself too seriously anymore and when I'm recording, I'm actually just enjoying it and going like, "What, what can we do here? Let's find mm-hmm. something at it instead." I think, um, weirdly enough, I was watching. I think it was when Bowie died. Maybe there was a documentary, and he was like, "If you're, if you're not doing something that's not kind of like, am I got to get away with this? Then you're not really doing it, and it's like you're not really doing anything that you you're going to enjoy in mm-hmm. like a year's time." Yeah. And I think the last maybe two or three years is. The most enjoyable fun that I've had in a studio, where like the single "Sister" that I released during lockdown, I recorded maybe about three years before that or four years before that, 
and I was kind of like, don't know if I should release this or not, but it was just because I'm screaming and shouting and la la la, and I played all the instruments on it. I don't even play drums, but the drums are like the probably the loudest thing on the whole track. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I was just having fun in the studio, and it, it, I hope it came across. And it seems as though people like that song just because it did sound so a bit chaotic, I suppose. But it's probably the most fun I've ever had in a studio in my life. <laughs> Maybe because it was just me and maybe it was there to annoy me, I don't know, but um, I, yeah, I just enjoyed everything about that whole mm. session. Mm. That's good. Like, I feel like when you are in a studio with other people, like if they're session musicians playing for you, regardless of how much you explain to them how, how much you want it to sound like, they will always have their own unique input, which is a great yeah. thing for them yeah. as, a, as a musician to have their own yeah. sort of weight style of playing or whatever, but I think it always does shine through on other tracks and like, I think, you know, as you said, you're in the studio and there was nobody there to annoy you, so you're probably just like completely <laughs> yeah. creatively free, where, yeah. you know, and it's been well received, so I mean, it's, it's exactly what you want and could want, I guess, from a track yeah. like that. It's great. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Now playing Sister by John Rush. Sometimes I'll just come up with yeah, a couple of little wee melody or wee line or wee whatever and write it down and remember it and come back to it. Um, but yeah, I think the, the most um, go to is trying to get a melody and then writing the lyrics afterwards because I used to not care about lyrics as well. But as, as I got older, I was like, I actually want to be known as somebody who can write a decent lyric. Mm -hmm, so I, I work definitely. a lot um, on that. Um, not that I've got away with it yet, but I will <laughs> one day. You are? You are yeah, so. Your songs are great. We really like them. <laughs> We've had you on all day while we yeah. were researching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. I'm trying. That's all I can say. That's <laughs> the main thing, though. I mean, there's nothing else to do other than try. Like, I feel like exactly. that's, you know. Yeah, 100%. That's what I was talking last week uh, to someone. And I, was, I was just saying, like, I am a songwriter because I get up in the morning and I write a song. Regardless mm -hmm. of what I do, other than that, like I'm a, I'm a songwriter, so that is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. I get up and I, I, and even when I'm working, like the like you probably know this as well. When you're at your work and you've got a melody, mm -hmm. that's ample time to write lyrics. Do you know what I mean? Like if, <laughs> if I'm an autopilot, I can go on autopilot. If I learn the job enough, I can go on autopilot and just walk about write songs all day. So that's. I don't think I could do that. I'd end up like burning myself well, in the okay. pizza oven again. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, it's great. You come up with yeah, melodies I, I in your head. I suppose you need to find a job that's not beside heavy machinery. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> monotonous. <laughs> Yeah, there's three things that you can do and you've got well I've got a couple of those of just doing this one thing that I'm gonna be doing for the for the next couple of those. So Yeah. And I will I'll lyrics in my head and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I do think that as well, like when you're doing something with your hands that you don't really have to think about. I always notice it when like I go go on a train of thought and I just I end up somewhere and I'm just like how did that end up in mm -hmm. this train of thought like I'm not even paying attention <laughs> yeah. to what I'm thinking about mm -hmm. or what I'm doing but I'm just like here in my head and I'm like what so 
Yeah, yeah. Just probably should write some songs. <laughs> yeah, but when you're working, even in your job, you can write melodies in your head, just like yeah. sing sing along in the kitchen. I always whistle like yeah, in the kitchen. Exactly. I always whistle when I'm doing stuff. It's <laughs> never gets so a bad annoyed. place to write songs. <laughs> yeah. So, what was the recording process like for your album Under the Apple Tree? Um, well, that was the first time I really worked with the producer I've, I've been working with ever since, uh, Liam McCluskey. So he does yeah, the and Heights and the... Yeah, you know, you know I know, yeah, yeah. I've heard a lot about him. Um, yeah, I think a few <laughs> people we've had on here mentioned Liam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'll be on next. He's amazing, man. He's, he's so good. Mm-hmm. So he's like next level, man. Um, and it was actually the guy I recorded Sister with that um, he was kind of taking a step back for the recording. They actually... Like pointed me in the direction of, of Liam. They were, I think, they went to school or something together. Right. Um, and yeah, we'd we'd kind of done a few things together just to feel each other out in the studio. And then yeah, I, we went in two days. We we booked and I recorded the full album in two days. So it was, oh I, I think, it was like three takes in each track, and mm-hmm. they're all live as well. So there was no mm-hmm. like do all the guitars and then we'll do the vocals. It was yeah. just everything was live. Um, and that was the first time I'd ever done that as well. Yeah. And I suppose it, it, it probably shows like how, yeah, how kind of far I've came and how confident I was, like I, that I knew I could just do that. Like I, I suppose like with any musician who who does three hour stints in bars, like three four nights a week, like you should be able to do that. You should be able to re- record a full album easy, just you yeah. yourself with your guitar. And mm-hmm. I'd never done it before because obviously when you go into a studio, you're like. Well, there's a keyboard there and I'm paying for all this equipment why are we not using everything every single thing yeah. that's in this building but um yeah again it was just like taking a step back and I really wanted uh, that kind of collection of songs to go if you come and see me live this is what it's going to sound like and yeah I'd never done that before I, I was always trying to overdo it in the studio so I think um again that was a really nice experience it was hard it was hard work and it was quite I remember after the first day, I was like, I don't know if I can do a day two of, of that because mm-hmm. it was quite draining. Like, mm-hmm. to, to, your, for your brain to go, don't fuck this up. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but no, for your brain to do that, and you know, like, if you fuck it up, you're going to have to do it again. Yeah, and that's, exactly. And you're time you're, bound as well. If you know you've got yeah, two days, just, you're like, I need to get your, this done. On your shoulders, yeah. man. It's just like, okay. Like, you have a good, good conversation with yourself a couple of times when you're there. But, <laughs> Again, I was really happy with the outcome and yeah, everything that's happened since that album has been yeah, the night and day from what what, what was beforehand. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can only thank Liam for that because he kind of pushed me into like like let's do something completely live, which was something I, I would never have done before. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favourite track from that album? <laughs> um, Difficult. I think I think Golden Green. <laughs> Golden Green, yeah, that di- Yeah, I think I, I know it's supposed to be difficult, but yeah, I think Golden Green, just because I had written it, like, I had the lyrics for about 10 years before I, before I finished on that definitive version of that song. Like, I, I wrote a song, well, it was called Golden Green, like, um, when I was in a band when I was 19. It was really heavy, it was kind of... A bit of free, a bit of Led Zeppelin. We, we were kind of influenced by these sort of things, like as a band. Mm-hmm. And I had this song with a, these lyrics, and I, I used to always think I'll probably just record that song myself as a wee acoustic version of that song in the first um, carnation of it. But as I started doing the kind of acoustic thing and really understanding that this was my new version of me, mm-hmm. um, I, I just wrote wrote a new melody to it and wrote a chorus because that chorus wasn't there either and then the, the verses um, lyric wise used to have always be in the back of my mind that I really wanted to use them because I thought even though I was 19, 20 when I wrote them I really thought it was something that was probably one of the best things that I'd done and mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to just put it in the bin because it was old and um, so yeah it was um, I recycled but it's probably one of my favourites yeah, we watched the video for Golden Green and we yeah, know, like, we seen that it was nice. shot in um, the Battlelands in Glasgow. So, what gave you the idea for the two dancers in the video? Because it's so beautifully done, mm-hmm. so nice. Um, do you know? I think they kind of 
the thought process was have you seen the Alexander McQueen documentary? No. It's on I think it's I think it's on Netflix or it was on Netflix and um, during Christmas before uh, lockdown happened and he had like this art installation where it was like this girl wearing a dress but she was almost like a jewellery box um, like, like the ballerina yeah yeah yeah, but yeah yeah and it was just always in my head and I I, I did think that I, well, I was going to do a video for this for this song I wanted just that I wanted something where it was just a girl like doing a ballerina mm-hmm. and um, maybe maybe budget wise we can afford to to do that so I think mm-hmm. um, having people just doing that kind of ballroom dance was the next best thing yeah. and David my my manager David Blair he he was working in Barrylands at the time so we were lucky enough that he had the set of keys that we took we were allowed to go in yeah uh, not they had the set of keys that we just spoke in snuck into the Barrylands no worries <laughs> Um, and weirdly enough, man, so we so we recorded we done that video in the January and then in the March lockdown happened and Barrylands was closed. So it was I think we released it February fourteenth. Um that and then, there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A month, four weeks later, we were in full lockdown. So and I think already gigs were cancelled in Barrylands in February. I think that's why we could get in. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's strange how it worked out because it, it looks as though it's in lockdown, but it actually was recorded before it. But okay. yeah, it just kind of yes, yeah, it's, it's um yeah, it's a strange one that we could yeah. that it happened and then definitely a wee bit of fate there. I think yeah, like lucky that it happens. Yeah, I so man, I think so. And uh, weirdly enough, a lot of people have done videos in Barrowland since, and they look very similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the first. Not you as were, good. Yeah, yeah, not as good. You were the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yours was a bit more classy, man. <laughs> bit more classy. Um, bit more classy, but they, no, I mean, Barrowlands is an institution, do you know what I mean? And it was yeah. it was so amazing to be allowed to be in there. And uh, the the couple were from Liverpool oh, wow. as well, which was, they were, it just so happened, they were up seeing their daughter who was at uni or something in, in Glasgow. We put out a post and they... They they done ballroom dancing, so they decided mm. they wanted to come and do the video. That's so, so it was so cool, man. So nice. it, was, it was really cool. And they, David's got a, he's got lots of family in Liverpool. My my manager, and obviously with the Beatles connection and yeah. the the album being called Beneath the Apple Tree and oh, oh, like Beatles companies called Apple and all it just yeah it all made sense for us. So we were mm-hmm. we were really happy when it was happening and still massively proud of that and that video and the song. Yeah. it's beautiful so nice. it is so nice and that i feel like Thank i'm the you. left out one i'm the only one that hasn't played in the battlelands you've even played <laughs> she's even played the battlelands and i'm not yeah. <laughs> well you were in the battlelands watching me that's even better yeah i was like <laughs> filming you guys but i wasn't playing that shit <laughs> so we saw that you toured new york could you tell us a bit about that um with my work I can go to New York and stay um, mm. for free, which is like that's sick. If, that's ideal. If I, if I didn't, if I didn't work where I worked, I wouldn't be going over to New York. I think I've went over like five or six times, and I've only had to pay for flights, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been over a couple of things and played that. I played uh, Sofa Towns, which was mm. a rooftop gig. Um, the, the cool thing about that was it was during the summer and I was playing just before, like it was that kind of blue where it, it was just starting to get dark. Mm. So it was it became light, well it was, it was light and then it became dark like during Twilight. my first song. That's and so then, nice. Yeah, and the first song that I sang was a song I wrote the year before in New York about Aww. being allowed to be in New York and being allowed to like sing songs and just travel about and stuff. That's so nice. And the song that's on the Shindig EP called Oh Me Oh My. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah th- there was just that moment where it was starting to get dark and I was singing this song there was like 50, 60 people in front of me just sitting listening very quiet and mm-hmm. on a rooftop which was just yeah it was just one of the moments where you're just like what the fuck something <laughs> I remember like kind of looking up into the sky and just laughing and everybody <laughs> kind of laughed with me because they were like I know <laughs> 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 like, what are we doing here <laughs> um, oh, that's so nice that's yeah, amazing that was, that was um I think the, the moments, like if you've been to New York or you're planning to go to New York, 
the moments just happen in New York. Like they, they happen anytime you go. Like I've got so many stories where it's just like, of course that happened because I was in New York yeah. at the time. Like mm-hmm. it's so many things. Um, it's a very special place, man. Definitely. Yeah. Would you um, say it's but, as yeah. magical as everyone else says? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I know it's like pure it sounds like bullshit and it sounds like a pure film or whatever, <laughs> but it's it's in, an incredible place and it definitely has something there where yeah, just crazy things happen and you've got yeah. stories to tell when you come back. Um, it is a unique place. Yeah, very very cool place. Yeah. 100%. Did the Americans struggle to understand you singing in your Glaswegian accent? <laughs> uh, no, they actually like it, man. I think they they've got a thing. They kind of Scottish people. I think Scottish. Yeah. Scottish and Irish people. They're just like, yeah, man. <laughs> drink scotch. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, so true. Hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Um, but they 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 they're very welcoming. Um, they might not understand me when I speak in between songs, but they, I, I assume they understand me when I'm singing. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to hope so. Anyway. <laughs> just, just let them go on with it, man. Let's finish this up, mate. As long, long as they're clapping, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so funny. Um, that's good, though, that you're um, well received. Now playing The Older the Grape, The Sweeter the Wine by John Rush. Given half a chance with you Do you ever see yourself leaving Glasgow and pursuing your music elsewhere? I used to always think that I would go to New York. I think I've like, as I've, as I've said, I've, I've just always had amazing times um, there. But I think um, as maybe the last two years and probably the, the pandemic and COVID and all that's probably influenced that, but mm. I, not really, not anymore. Maybe. Mm. I would maybe go to like a Scandinavian country or something. I think they're mm. more aligned with Scotland than the rest of the yeah. world. But <laughs> even at that, no, really you're happy at home. I would, yeah. I'm, I'm massively happy. I would, someone asked me like, what would be the happiest? Like, if my, if money was no object or whatever, and I did say to them, if I could wake up in the morning and just switch on a laptop and record some stuff, that would be the perfect life for me. And then I kind of. Yeah, more, I probably sounded like an absolute dickhead because I was like, I actually do that, man. So I'm pretty happy. And it was just like, that's so good. John, thanks, mate. <laughs> they wanted me to like talk about like going to Hawaii or something. Like that. I was like, pretty happy with now, so I don't need it. They were just like, fuck off, John. Wow, well, Glasgow <laughs> is such a nice place to be. But yeah, man. Yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm pretty happy. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy, and Glasgow's Glasgow's cool. So. You're happy I'm where happy you are. I feel I've like got, as soon as you get to that point in your life where you can just say like if like what I was saying the other day, like if, if you've got a roof over your head and you've got good pals around you and you've got like you've got all the time in the world, you can actually just be happy. Like I say that all the time. If I've got money for fags and booze and a roof over my head, <laughs> I'm fucking sound. Like I'll be fine. I don't need anything. Yeah. So your new song, The Older the Grape, the Sweeter the Wine, is like a very upbeat and sort of like positive is this like your view of finally coming out of lockdown like tell us a little bit about what it's about um i think it was yeah it's definitely a thought thought of hopefully um 2020 wasn't my best year mm. and i've just missed it and i hope it, i hope that's the same for everybody i hope there was yeah. mm-hmm. like the pure vintage year of John Rush gigging was going to be 2020 and it's done, it's over. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I think um, the kind of message of that is 
like it's, it's not the older the grape the sweeter the wine like the, the older we all get hopefully the better it's going to be so the the best years are, are still from 2021 20, onwards and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i think that's... i was probably in the back of my mind while i was writing it that that chorus is and um, with it especially again with, with liam's uh, production as well like with trumpets and stuff like that in mm. the background stuff i wouldn't have done in the past the brass sounds um, great on it yeah yeah, yeah, so it sounds phenomenal, man, and that was all Liam's doing. Um, but yeah, I think that's the, the kind of the general consensus of the song. Like, as, as, and I knew when I wrote it that I wanted to re- release that as things were starting to kind of come back mm-hmm. out again. So that's why it was it was released in twenty third. Then when up to here, at least like in the twenty sixth, everything was opening back up. Um, yeah. Well. To a certain extent, nearly. So mm-hmm. it just felt as though it was the right time to do it. Yeah, it was a, it was the right time to bring it out, and it was we just finished it. We were just being able to go back into the studio and kind of do bits and bobs just before we could release it as well. So it just felt right to release it, and yeah, kind of it kind of worked. As it seems to be everybody's well, people who have spoke to me are really happy with it and enjoy mm-hmm. listening to it and stuff, mm, which yeah, is it's a nice song. always a bonus. Always Definitely. A bonus. Is it, what you said to me it was a wee summer tune it definitely is like and it is that sort of positive yeah, mm-hmm. uplifting like we can finally see a light at the end of this fucking god awful tunnel that we've all had to go through for the past year and I think yeah. like yeah, you it's know, a nice message definitely I think like a lot of people had stuff planned for 2020 and I think mm-hmm. everybody just had to come to terms with it it's just a write off the year's just a write off you just skip that one yeah. like it's just yeah. you don't, there's no point like yeah. yeah it feels like it's been stolen from us mm-hmm. literally the year we yeah, graduated yeah, and all that kind of finish so much into a pandemic what the fuck is that about do you know what I mean what is that about why who ever planned that up there fucking (laughs) sacked Mm -mm. sacked you're getting sacked that one one guy man (laughs) that one guy (laughs) big man up the stairs (laughs) (laughs) I hope he's fucking greeting every day (laughs) (laughs) do you have any advice for musicians who are just starting out um, I think if I was talking to myself when I was starting out is just like just let go man and just enjoy it and don't be like pure serious and yeah there's, there's so much that the, there's so much about general life that makes you kind of get serious and if you're lucky enough to be a musician or you're lucky enough to be so even just creative in any any sort of way like it's such an outlet do you know what I mean and mm. like to to be to take the seriousness into that as well is like a fucking dinner do you know what I mean so mm-hmm. I think um, yeah just enjoy it be mm-hmm. happy have lots and lots and lots of fun I was going to say drugs there but don't <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't abuse it yeah. don't use it <laughs> where did you come up with that that's class <laughs> no it's use it don't abuse it I thought that's, I heard that's that that's <laughs> <laughs> let's get a t-shirt yes let's shirt. do it back to back catalogs and John Rush on it yes, with your face on it use it don't <laughs> I've never heard you say that before <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> that's so interesting and I think you're so right because I feel like with a lot of musicians especially like singer songwriters they do try and have this like mysterious mm-hmm. dampener like oh I have to be some ter- certain type of way to come across as this like really sort of pensive person and it's like for fuck's sake man lighten mm-hmm. up lighten up like it's how you yeah. fall into a deep yeah. dark depression just from so so true being so sad. many people try too hard and then yeah they try to act like they're someone they're not and which just never goes down well i think mm-hmm. with fans they just i think like at the, at the start when you you know of you begin to know of a musician like that <clears throat> you're like oh they're so mysterious and I could never really decipher what they're writing about and then like ha- like after a, a while of listening to them you're like for fuck's sake lighten mm. up literally like <laughs> get over yourself but even if it does work you know <laughs> it's still sad like building your career on a on a sadness persona yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. building it on a darkness yeah. dark yeah. dark mixture <laughs> not good like no, fuck definitely not definitely yeah I think um, I remember uh, like as as I was saying before, like turning thirty and stuff was like a pure massive like moment of where I, I, I had to like kind of decide what I, what I wanted to be or if I wanted to be myself instead of acting or trying to be something else. And um, I do remember doing a gig after that, and my sister came to see me, and she was just like, "John's so happy, man. He's so mm-hmm. upbeat. He's talking to people like while he's on stage." And I never used to do. I never used to talk in between songs at all. I used to just go on with the next track and. Mm-hmm. 
it probably came across like quite arrogant of being like you only need to hear the tunes man and everything's yeah. cool but in reality I think now I'd, I'd probably sing like five songs in a 45 minute set because I'm too busy talking to people Chatting. I'm just too That's busy so really nice. enjoying like mm-hmm. being there and yeah. going fucking like how mental is this that I'm on this stage and we're all here together and like I'm sure people love that. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> people probably it's, love it's that. It's always fun, man. It's always fun, and I think um, there's a uh, there's a picture that I've got that Baz Baza Mills took, and it was me coming off of uh, the King Tut stage, and it was like a sold out gig. I was supporting someone, um, and I I couldn't have had more more fun. Like I was just laughing in between songs. Everybody was laughing with us, and we were just like having a real, just a really good night. Everybody in the building was. And he took a photo of me coming off stage, and I'm just like, Buzzing. still smiling, yeah. still just mm-hmm. a big giant smile. And the, the people behind me, still at the at the kind of front of the stage and stuff, they're still gutting themselves. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like how that's just like the moment that I will always remember where things changed, and I just started to be myself, and I was just enjoying it. That's so good. It's so like I, I think uh, enjoy yourself instead of being so dark and mean and moody, like because mm-hmm. it's. It gets old very quickly, especially for yourself as well. The yeah. person who's doing it, yeah. it it's not not great fun for them either. So exactly, it, need, it needs to be fun for everybody. Definitely, mm-hmm. I like that advice. Yeah, me That's too. Good. We always have different yeah. advice. Like everyone we ask on the show, we every, everybody gets asked this question, and they've all had different mm-hmm. answers. And it's so nice to hear that one because we haven't had that one yet. We mm-hmm. haven't had just enjoy yourself, which is I think such an people don't think how important it is, but really, you know, when you're going through it yourself and you are trying to do music yourself, it's such a, an important thing. Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm. have fun. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So yeah. what music are you listening to at the moment? That's another question we want to know. Um I think Jade Bud I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, she's yeah. I don't know if she's not Jade Bud, but she's a just a young kind of uh, female singer songwriter. I seen her on Jules Holland a couple of years ago, and it was just her and an acoustic guitar. But her voice, like, it's this little small thing, man. But her voice is huge and like, raspy, and she was just had so much like she she was taking that moment. She was on Jules Holland, and I, yeah. since then I've like followed everything that she's released, and and she just released a I think it's live from RCA Records. It's like she done that kind of live yeah, EP, cool. so it's like three or four songs, I think. Um, mm. Yeah, I've been listening to that non-stop in the, the past couple of weeks. I think she only released it maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Nathaniel Ratcliffe, you been listening I've to his, I think it was released. I think that was released during lockdown. So he's uh, Nathaniel Ratcliffe in the Night Sweats, but he's released his solo um, album during lockdown. And I'd, I'd was constant listening. To that. I was never off when it when I first list, uh, heard it. I was that was on repeat for a, a very good few months mm. during lockdown. Um, and I don't know. Paul McCartney's reimagined album. I seen that. Not the, not the the uh, initial um, McCartney three, which was which was cool because Paul McCartney released an album and stuff. But I think the reimagined album is like really cool like there's yeah. there's some people on it that I'd, I'd never heard of before and they've done like like full 180 on the songs that he's wrote yeah <clears throat> to nothing like Paul McCartney but it just shows you the kind of that Paul McCartney's still got the massive songwriting ability regardless mm-hmm. of like he's an 80 year old man do you know what I mean his voice isn't going to be rocking it but mm-hmm. his his songs are obviously still there if someone can reimagine it and a like a, a very relevant pop song. Now playing Drink With Me by John Rush. You go your way And I'll go main Maybe someday, one day we'll meet further down the line Raise a glass and pour some wine Do me one more thing if you could be so kind Drink with me and drink with me 
with me Take with me till the morning come Like we always joke because like Juju and people in my flat also had like their their embarrassing emo phase like where they're emo yeah when you're like kids. 13 you know and I just bypassed that I just went straight to like dad rock yeah. like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and all that I was just like such a fucking weirdo I was exactly the same man I was watching all these emos like what the fuck is going on <laughs> literally that was me to my big sister and I'm like why are you listening to this shite and why did they get a side fringe out here though fuck off <laughs> you never heard the it was relatable <laughs> It wasn't relatable, it's shit. <laughs> no, I don't know. It was like, Mum, you can't tell me what to do. Yeah, but I still was like that, Mum, you can't tell me what to do when I was listening to like the Beatles. I was like, <laughs> Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I literally. guess you, were, you guys were just too cool. I was like, Lady Madonna <laughs> is playing right now. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that, was, that was my teenage teenagers as well, 100%. Yeah, for That's sure. That's nice. You guys were, were cool, I guess. You were cool too, just in a different <laughs> kind of weird way. Just in a, um, in a dark way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know. I'm not saying it's coming. I, I'm not agreeing. I'm not agreeing. Maybe. What is it that I've seen? This like really famous Scottish tweet, and it's like, it's so funny. Nobody in Glasgow cares what race you are, like where you come from. They just, just care as long as you're not a golf. Like literally, as long as yeah. you're not a golf. Yeah. <laughs> That's so you don't have a skateboard and just like skating outside the museum. We're good, man. We're, yeah. we're all good. We're all good. And at four corners, it's just as long as you're not there, you're fine. <laughs> As long as you don't have a wallet on a chain. Oh. <laughs> Why have you got a dog chain on? Have you got a dog? No. <laughs> so I just wear normal trousers. Yeah, that's You like... reprobate. <laughs> like, you're fucking embarrassment. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So for our final question, <clears throat> um, have you got any releases or shows coming up that you'd like to tell us about? Um, on the on the fifteenth of May, I'm playing a immersive TV show, which is a fully immersive, basically Zoom gig. Mm -hmm. So the, there's a, a a twelve meter screen in front of the acts, and they it all separates into a hundred screens, so you can see everybody mm -hmm. who's watching, and I can yeah, and they can see you, blah blah blah. That's so and you cool. can hear them it's as really well. Cool. So they get muted in between during songs, mm -hmm. but then. In between songs, you can actually converse with them, which is like incredible. That's um, I've done really one in uh, early April, I think, or the end of March, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, yeah, it was phenomenal. It just felt like a real gig. Um, obviously, true. not as as amazing as yeah. a real gig, but it was the the next best thing mm. that you could you could hope for. So it was. Yeah, that sounds yeah, so cool. Fifteenth of May is that. How right? do people and connect to the, that? Oh, oh. Sorry. Um, Oh no, sorry, the, so Immersive, you just go into the Immersive TV website and all there, because they're, they're doing a lot, they're doing like comedy gigs and it's it's all the same venue it's put on as well, so it's Room 2 in uh, the city centre of Glasgow okay. um, on Nelson Mandela Place. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that gig's happening on the 15th of May. On the, between the 12th and the 15th I'm playing Doing the Rabbit Hole, which is unbelievable that that is going ahead looking like it weirdly enough so dizzy rascal's playing doing the rabbit hole and he's playing linda's farm and i'm playing both right. and i'm playing the same night as him so i'm going to like i'm going to be hanging about yeah you guys sure are going to be do it. mates by the end do it. <laughs> yeah i think so unless he gets like some sort of like contract out that i'm not allowed to be within 100 feet of him because <laughs> just specifically you know, just follow me about <laughs> Yeah, it's getting a bit a bit crazy. He keeps staring at me. <laughs> he keeps shouting um, Dizzy every time he's near me. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what he keeps saying. What are we doing in this song or what? And I don't know how he's talking about it. Um, oh, so, so, so Linda's fun is September 2nd as well. So I'm playing that festival. So I've got two festivals, which is for not having any gigs and not being allowed in a venue still at this moment. 
mm-hmm. for that to be possibly happening is kind of unreal. Yeah. Um, and I do have my head plane show on the 20th of August, which is officially going on my head um, in St. Luke's in Glasgow as nice, well. Nice, nice venue. This is the fourth the fourth date that we've, we've moved it to, so hopefully, fingers crossed, this is wow. it. If not, I'm retiring before that. Again. <laughs> no, so that's that'll be a shame. <laughs> that's, you're not retiring. I'm sorry. I've I've made that decision for you. I've decided. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sorry. That's so cool that you have some gigs planned and stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and, definitely. Um, and with obviously this single being released um last week, me and Liam have been recording a lot. Um, and hopefully we'll be recording even more so so we, it looks as though we'll have an album before I would say before September, October time Amazing. Um, hopefully that will get released and yeah it's, it's very different from the just me and an acoustic guitar um, a lot it's still kind of it still sounds like me but there's definitely a lot happening that's, that wouldn't uh, originally happened in a, a John Rush album so I'm hoping that people really enjoy it because uh, sonically, I I love it. I think it's def- he Liam's definitely brought my kind of old head, old kind of like techniques and wanting to sound like hissy and sound like vinyl and sound a bit like mm-hmm. it is just me and my acoustic guitar. He's like very much into the kind of pop world, so he's yeah. like brought it into the twenty first century. Maybe where I've been kept in the sixties and seventies. So. <laughs> It sounds it sounds cool, man. I think it'll be I think it'll be an eye opener for people. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think you'll you'll either be like, "Where's these acoustic songs?" or you'll be like, "Fucking hell, this is cool." This and is I, cool. I hope it's the latter. Um, I'm, I'm sure really it will be. Yeah, the, can't the wait. Album. Should it will be so exciting. Just plug yourself and tell everyone that's watching like where they can find you online. So, what are your like handles for Insta, Facebook, whatever, blah blah. blah. Yeah, so Facebook's uh, John Rush Music mm-hmm. um, and Instagram and Twitter is John Rush Music UK. Um, okay. Everything is on there. My, you can find me on Spotify, um, even SoundCloud and stuff like that. YouTube, YouTube's John Rush 100 because somebody's got John Rush Music, which I'm really <laughs> unhappy about. But, <clears throat> we'll cancel um, them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll find them. Don't you worry, man. I'll find them. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I'm on everything, and yeah, I'm very accessible when it comes to my music and stuff. I'm not really like you need to like buy it, but like mm-hmm. you'll find ways. So I just might as well just give you the ways. Yeah, like, everything's on Spotify, <laughs> and everything's on SoundCloud. You don't need to go. You don't need to go into the dark web to find. You know what? Because I generally <laughs> just give it away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We will link up um, your stuff. We have a playlist on Spotify with all of our previous guests that have been on the show. So we'll put some of your music oh, on there amazing. for people to listen to as well. Definitely. We are back to back catalogues and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, yeah, Apple Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, pretty much everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. B2B catalogues or back to back catalogues. And you can email us at b2b catalogs at gmail.com mm-hmm. yeah if you have questions or mm. anything mm-hmm. and you want to come on the show mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> we've had a few people do that so you never yeah. know but um, so today we've had john rush on and it was so nice to speak to you thanks, thanks for, for coming, coming on, on the show <laughs> Thanks Jeez. very much for inviting me, and that sounded freaky that they both used to say that. <laughs> We're a, a routine <laughs> now. <laughs> We've done Thanks so much for inviting me, man. It's been fun. Um, you're you a, you a, you a very comical together. <laughs> well, well done. Yes. Well, it was lovely to meet you. It was. And it was lovely. And chatting. And everything.